Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how to get this crazy looking x-ray effect in Blender. Alright, as with many of these visual effects tutorials, our first step is going to be going into File, New, and switching to a VFX workflow. We don't really need these windows, so I'm just going to slide that up, get that out of our way, and I'm also going to pull up our timeline here. Let's hit open and import our footage. I'm going to use this video I took of a door and what we're going to be doing is tracking this door and then behind it we'll just add in a nice wireframe of what the building behind it might look like. So I'm going to hold shift, right click and drag to the point where this is at about 100 frames and then go playback, set start frame. And I'm going to go to about 210-ish. So playback and set end frame. And if you want to get the video all cached, just hit prefetch up here. This will turn a lighter blue and it can play back quickly now. So I'm not going to run through the basics of tracking here. I'm just going to do a really basic tripod track, but I'll make sure there's a link to a video where you can learn all about tracking. For a tripod track, you only need about four tracking markers. But if you want to get something a little bit more steady, that might be a good idea to add in a few more. It turns out this footage is incredibly easy to track, which is really nice. But I've got a few tracking markers going here. I'm going to go over into the solve panel, check tripod, and then go camera motion. Now if we go up here to this little plus mark, let's add in a new general and layout tab. And the first thing we want to do here is set up our camera in a good position. So I'm going to go 1 to view the y-axis, and then control alt and 0 on the number pad to set the camera to our view. Then I'm going to go G and Z and that'll just bring it right up above the ground plane. If you want to zoom this in a little bit, you can hit G and then middle mouse button, then we can just slide it right in there. I'm also going to go over to the camera properties here and set our focal length to be whatever it was. Honestly, I don't quite remember what it was. I think around 22 is probably good though. Okay, let's get to work setting up this wireframe. I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a plane, and then kind of scale that up like a floor. If we look at where our camera is and kind of think about where the door is, probably around here is a good place to have the plane scaled up to. I'm kind of roughly matching the actual structure of the room that's behind this door, so that's why I'm being a little bit more specific about how I'm placing things. But I'm just setting up this plane by being in edge select mode, grabbing these edges with G, and then just sliding them around with the axis that I want them to go on. Okay, let's add in that wireframe look. I'm gonna go Control R, and you can see if we put our mouse around here, we've got an edge loop, and I'm just going to scroll up until there's quite a few of those. Left click to set that, and to make sure it doesn't slide anywhere, you can just right click, and those are locked in. Let's do that along the x-axis as well. So I'm going to make it so that they're roughly square. Something like this will probably work. Now let's select this edge with Alt, Shift, and left mouse button, and I'm going to do that with this edge as well. Then I'm just going to hit E and Z, to bring that up kind of like some nice walls. If we look from camera view, we can see what we're doing a little bit better. I'm going to add in some more loop cuts by going Control R, and then just scroll up along the walls here. Something like this I think will work pretty well. There's a really cool feature in Blender. You can select one edge, and then hold down Control, and select another, and that will select the shortest line in between those two edges. So I'm going to do that along the top edge here, and I'm just going to take this and extrude it out along every axis except the x-axis, just to make sure that's locked. So I'm going to go Shift X, and I'm just going to move this up kind of like a roof. Let's once more go Control R and drop in some edge loops. So we've got our basic building here. We can't really see the grid shape right now just because it's all flat planes. What we're going to do to get that grid shape is go into Modifiers, Add Modifier, and use a wireframe. Now the thickness of this grid is kind of up to your own taste, but personally I like them a little bit smaller, so maybe somewhere around a oh, 0 0.0036. If you hit Z and go into rendered view right now, you can see by default we're using Eevee, and this isn't very much to look at right now, so let's add in a material for this guy. I'm going to start by actually going into the world settings and just taking the background color and making sure that's black so we can have a nice base to work off of. Let's go over and add a shading tab, so general and shading. Okay, let's drop in a new material here. Immediately we end up with this principal node. We don't need that, so I'm going to hit X. What we do need is a Shift A Shader Emission. So I'm going to grab that, and also a Shift A Shader Transparent. Now if you have Node Wrangler enabled, we can mix these together real easily just by hitting Control Shift and then right mouse and dragging in between these two. Now with this, if we go Control Shift and left mouse, that'll view it immediately. Okay, how are we going to mix these together? Well that's a good question. If we select one of these and go Control T, it will immediately add in this crazy configuration for image textures. And we're going to be doing this procedurally, so we can just exit out of this image texture here. But these two nodes are what we really need. 
if we take it so that generated is going into vector instead of UV, and then add in a shift A converter and separate X, Y, Z, we can take this vector, drop it into this one, and we're gonna use one of these values as kind of a gradient to go from this side to this side. And that way we can use that to mix the transparent in emission. And eventually the effect we wanna have is we want a dark background with a brighter foreground so that the wires are kind of fading out towards the back of the room here. Let's hop into the rendered shading and take a look at some of these values. I'm just control shift clicking these and we're getting different results based on what axis we hit. It looks like Y is probably what we're gonna want because we've got this foreground to background gradient going on. Now, if we change the location of the Y axis, you can see our gradient is moving around. I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here and scale Y by negative one down here. So I'm just gonna hit a negative and it disappears. But if we change the Y location, We've got darker over here and lighter over here. Let's mess with the scale a little bit to see if we can make this gradient a little bit softer, actually turning up the value since it's a negative one. So somewhere about a 0.2 seems to work pretty well, but now we gotta fix the Y location again. I'd like the background to be just visible, but not too bright. So I think these values will work pretty well for us. Now let's take this Y value and drop it into the factor. If you want a little bit more control, you can go Shift A and drop in a color ramp on top of this, and that way you can control the bright and dark values a little bit better, but I'd say this is pretty good. Okay, let's view our mix shader again, and if we take a look at this, it is straight light values still, and that's just not really what we want. The reason it's not working is our transparent actually isn't doing anything right now, and that's just because in our material settings, we don't have the opacity working at all. So let's switch this from opaque to alpha blend, and now you can see the back is actually starting to be a little bit more see-through. And our black world background is showing through. Okay, this is pretty good. Let's just crank up the strength a bunch and switch this to kind of a blue color. Now you can see we basically have Tron, but it's missing something, which is crazy glowingness. So if we go over to the render properties here and check bloom, now we've got this nice Tron look. <laughs> While we're in this tab, let's go down to color management and then just drop this filmic to be standard. That way our footage matches up. And right now, if we take a good look, we can't really see any footage. So if you want to match that up a little bit better, let's go back to our camera. And actually, let's go into layout so we can see what we're doing. Camera settings here, and then background images is what we want. If we drop that down and go add image, switch that to movie clip. Here's our original footage of the door. Okay, so if we play the animation, you can see our background image is moving but our camera is not moving at all. And that's just because we don't have that tripod track constraint. So if we go over to the constraints tab here, go add object constraint and camera solver, you can see our camera goes crazy and it is moving around with the footage now. If you wanna play this around and just take a look to make sure it's rotating nicely, you can. I think I might've rotated it too much before. So let's set that up again. There we go. I like the way this looks. All right, so we've got our X-ray working. We've got our camera matching up with it. Now all we need to work on is compositing it together. And if you want, you can take last week's tutorial and then just plop a guy in here with a crazy heat map material going on. He's a little bit big right now. There we go, I like the positioning of that. Okay, like I said, compositing, let's do that. So in the compositing tab, let's check use nodes. Don't really need this, so I'm gonna drop that down. And the timeline is pretty useful, so let's keep that. So we've got render layers and composite and nothing else. If you've enabled Node Wrangler, you can just go Control Shift and click and view our render layers, which is nothing right now. So let's hit F12, render that out real quick. Hey, there we go, okay. I'm gonna hold shift, right click, and drag through these to get a nice Y going. And I'm also gonna go control space to make this full screen and to get this sidebar out of the way. And now we can really see what we're working with. So to get this working, we're basically going to add it to our original footage. So if we go shift A, input, and movie clip, we've got our footage of the door here. And we're gonna go shift A, color, mix, and then just drop this on top of here. Make sure the movie clip is going into the top image, and then our render layers are going into the bottom image. Right now, this is set to mix, so if we drop this down and switch it to add, you can see our wireframe is showing up on top of our original footage, which is excellent. Now, you could just stop here, but I'm not a huge fan of how ridiculously clean this looks, so I'd like to grunge it up a little bit, and the way I'm actually going to do that is move our render layers down here a little ways and add in an input image sequence. Now I happen to be in possession of this crazy image sequence, which is a TV turning on. And this is a old tube TV, so you can see the little crazy, I don't even know what these are called going on. And this footage is also in slow motion, so it's got this really wild looking effect. 
I'm going to set the start frame of that to be 100, our start frame here, and that way at the start, it's pretty much black, but then you get this insane effect of it turning on, which is wild and grungy, and I love it. So I'm going to mix this with my render layers by going Shift A, and you guessed it, Mix Node. Instead of having this value be Mix, I'm going to switch it to be a Multiply. And I'm just going to drop this image in the bottom and take a look at what this is. Hey, that's wild looking. Now for most of this footage, it's going to be pretty dark just because it's multiplying this crazy black weird stuff with this, and the end result is pretty unseeable right now. So I'm gonna go Shift A into color, and then I'm gonna drop in RGB curves, and I'm gonna crank this bottom value up like crazy. So now we can kind of see something weird going on here. If we actually drop down the top value, it gets even brighter, and as we pan through this, we can see this absolutely gnarly grungy effect going on. If that's not enough brightness for you, you can go Shift D and drop this in again, and that gets even brighter. So now for most of the footage, we're gonna have this crazy effect going on. Okay, if we go back to our add node here, I'm gonna drop in this last RGB curves into the bottom socket and replace that. And if we view this, we can see it pasted on top of our original footage. And we've got our nice glow going on underneath here and our nice heat mapped character. And it's kind of like we're looking right through the door. If it's a little bit dark still and you can't see it very well and you'd like to make sure you can see the effect a little bit better, with your add node here, the slider says you can only go up to one, but actually you can just select it and type in two and that adds double the brightness and that tends to make the effect a lot more vibrant and visible. Now if you wanted to leave it off here, you absolutely could, but I'm just going to add in a little bit more. What I'd like to happen is at the start here, I'd like this effect to kind of blossom from the center of the frame. So let's hop back to motion tracking. If we just select one of these trackers in the middle of the frame and go control I and H, that'll hide everything else so it's not in the way. And I'm going to go up to where it says tracking here and switch that to mask. I'm just going to go new here and that will add in a new mask. And I'm going to go shift A and use a circle. Now this appears down at the bottom of the corner here, so I'm going to go G, and then just kind of move that right to the center of the frame. And at the start here, I'd like it to be non-existent, but then once it gets to around 15 or 16, I'd like it to be scaled up all the way around the frame. So if I check this little dot here, it'll automatically insert keyframes, so I'm going to do that. And then at frame 17 or so, I'm going to scale this up all the way across the frame. And that drops in a little keyframe there. And then when we get closer to 105, it's going to be really small. So I'm going to hit S and scale it down. And now if we play the animation, you can see our mask grows up really big. And that's pretty nice. Now I don't want there to be a little bit of a dot in the way at the start. So I'm going to go back a few frames from 105 and then hit S and 0. And that'll make sure that the mask is just really tiny. The next few frames, it just goes up to 5 and then gets huge. One more thing I'd like to animate with this mask is the feathering. So it's a soft transition instead of a really harsh circle. So at frame 117, where we put the keyframe before, I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, and then just drag away from one of the edges here, and that'll get this really nice feathering going on. Now if we work our way back to 105, you can see the feathering is gone, which we don't want. So let's just do that once more. There we go. Now it'll grow from here to here, and then just get really big all of a sudden. Now we probably could leave it this way, but let's just go a little bit more over the top, and select everything with A, and then select this tracking marker that we left here, and go Control p That way our mask will stick to one specific part in the frame. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's a nice little detail. Okay, let's tie this back together with our compositing. If we go back to compositing, after the add node, I'm going to add in a mix node. I'm just going to go duplicate, and then switch this add back to a mix, and I'm going to take our original footage where there's nothing going on, and then just mix that in here. So our add is mixed with our original footage, and in the factor, we're going to use that mask that we just created. So Shift A, input, mask, and let's select the mask here, and then just drop it right into the factor. Now you can see if we scrub through the footage, this crazy x-ray effect is just blossoming right from the center of the frame until it completely fills up the frame. And this is really wild at the moment. That's just because our tube TV image sequence is going a little bit wild. <laughs> Eventually it calms down and it looks pretty dang sick. Now to render this out, you just hop over to the render panel here, set where you want your image sequence to go and make sure that's PNG, name it, and then just hop up to render and render animation. All right, so if you found this useful and you'd like to learn more about visual effects, there's a link in the description that says five tips for integrating CG objects into the live action footage. 
and this is a special tutorial I've made for people who are interested in visual effects in Blender. There's a lot of really good information in there that can help you out. But hey, that's about it for this video. I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!